the new sound for sports in the Bay Area. It's 95.7. The game. But uh, I want to make a uh, special presentation. Uh, last week I took a lot of abuse for my thoughts at the end of the show. Unfortunately, my partner to my right, John Lund, got a pass. So tonight when he forgets where he went with his opinions and who's been saved, this compass will hopefully get you back on the track. I knew this was coming. I actually brought a compass. Um, I have a compass. All right. The point is that you're listening to 95.7 again. This is a guru along with my man Eric Davis. But Eric, Helen Keller can see that the 49ers are the Super Bowl favorites. And Ray Charles can see that they still don't have anybody that can play. Situation. You're talking about something. You asked me to give you reasons why you're trying to. No, I'm not. Avoid. I'm giving you facts. If you can't cover Kirk Victor Cruz in that slot, if you can't cover Kirk Cruz in that slot, that's not Alex Smith. The last I lived was not a DB. Towards the end, it, it got a little long with that, and I think that's the thing that I would give you for feedback. you got to listen to each other and let the exchanges develop. I thought you started out with great control, and the first two, three minutes, it felt real good. But then it became a shouting match to see who could get in. And obviously, you were listening to Coach Tierney, who I have to tell this to every single week. You might want to hit the brakes every now and then. That's the only thing I can, I can critique. Otherwise, it was entertaining. Hey, i got to say, what's with the leading Questions. Is that too aggressive there, Barrett? He knows exactly what I'm going to tell you. Maybe he liked it. Maybe Brazil. Hey, if come you're on. Your hey, here's the problem. You don't make that call of hiring somebody. I do. And I don't want 48 minutes of people stepping on each other. And you know so what? thank you. Have a good night. And you hired me, so it's obviously there's and something there. Let me ask you this. Is that entertaining? That was pretty good, right? For two minutes, yes. And then you lost interest? Yes. I thought my man stepped up. Good job, Brady. Well done, brother. Brandon Tierney, Iowa, and this begins now. Welcome back to 95.7 The Game. I am Eric Bryant, here with Mark Riley of the Prize Guys. And in 10 minutes, we have Michael Jordan talking about his thoughts on the Warriors fans booing and what he would have done in Chicago had they booed him. But first, we're talking Warriors playoff basketball next year. It almost crashed riding my bike, listening on my app. When you said the Warriors will not make the playoffs yet next year, what do you think? Well, you know, explain this to How are they not a playoff team? Well, for, for, for a couple, first of all, they're running in 13th place right now. Let's hold them up. But that's before they have Andrew Bogan next year. Steph Curry, Andrew Andrew Bogan's Bogan's a dead guy. Andrew, 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 Andrew Bogan is a dead guy, yet he is the average is 9.3 rebounds a game. What is the number one? What was, the number, on the bench. what was the number one cause of the Warriors' problems? It's rebounding. If you combine David Lee and Andrew Bogan, do you know what they have? They have the second highest rebounding total of anybody in the NBA aside from Orlando. They both have to be on the um, This is what I was talking about earlier about selling whether you believe in it or not. But I was sold. I, I don't know if he truly believes that the Warriors are going to make the playoffs or a playoff contender, but uh, the way he was talking, he sold me that he truly believes in the Eric Ryan, your guy, has never Minutes of debate begins now. This is the champ, and you're listening to 95.7 The Game, the Bay Area's only FM sports station. And stay right here, because coming up in just a few minutes, Roger Cadellion has brought down the hammer on the Saints and given them an offer they can't refuse. Stay tuned for more. But right now, I'm standing next to a baseball expert, master debater. His name is Michael Irving. Welcome to the show. What's happening, man? How are you? I'm being very champish in my full element right now. You're Kevin. Let's, come on, you're Kevin. Please. The only two words I have to say about that is please. Your name is Champ. The only thing Urban, about Michael Urban is that he spells his first name with a Y. But that's that was pretty good radio. That was good radio. Uh, I will say this, Kevin, that's the first time I've actually seen you look uncomfortable and nervous. And look, Michael knows his stuff. Uh, I expected Michael would, would definitely knock you down a few, a few notches. One thing I thought you missed an opportunity on. Use some examples. Kevin Brown's contract, Barry Zito's contract. That's where you didn't help yourself. But overall, it was entertaining. And there's just, you've got that it kind of factor that seems to come across even when you're not at your A game. Four and a half minutes of the lucky break starts now. 95.7 Bay Area's only FS 
Sports Station. It is your boy Rico in the studio. And right about now, folks, we got a nice little debate coming up in about 10 minutes, though. We'll be talking to Bussy Bully, calling us live from spring training, letting us know what's going on down there. And whether he wants to move to first base from behind the play. I don't think you do, Buster. That's just one player speaking to another. But before we jump into that, I want to take a big bite out of this juicy topic that's been on for the last 10 years of the baseball community. Does Barry Bonds belong in the Hall of Fame? Yes or no? I thoroughly believe that he does. And my counterpart, Mark Pryor, for some reason, he thinks that he does. Oh, you know he does. Dude. Mark? Please explain to me how you can even say that about Barry Bonds. You mean aside from the fact of him disgracing the game with baseball? No, no, no. I don't believe it was a disgrace. He played the game the way it was supposed to be played he on the field. He did the game he at the highest game. level. He didn't cheat the game. I think that nowadays we're kind of looking at PEDs and we're saying that that's cheating. But you know what, Mark? If you ask me, a lot of these guys who are older into baseball, you're really amazing. You're Hank Aaron, you're really the Cubs. They took a little thing called greenies. And if I'm not mistaken, they were hurt them before they took them. And then all of a sudden they took these greenies and their performance in as well. All of a sudden they get on the field. Well, now, wait a I thought you did a really good job, but trying to debate Pride, who has a vote in the Hall of Fame, is very difficult. I thought a lot of times you were right on the edge of certain things and you kind of pulled up, but I, I agree with uh, JB here. Let me grab my compass. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought that thing you did at the end was really smart, and I never let the facts get in the way of a good show. Well, the Bonds of Sharks here meet Coach Kibley. Listen up. We've got eight contestants the rest of the way, the next 30 minutes. We're going head-to-head. -head. Each coach is going to select one guy opposite the other coach. The difference is our first round, Coach Tierney, you're going to have to put your two guys up first since you've got five. On your team, Dilly has three. Four subjects will be assigned over the next 30 minutes. Brandon or Dibs, whoever is going first, whichever contestant is going first, you will have the choice to defend which side of the topic you want to argue. All right, welcome well, back to 957 The Game, the Bay Area's only FM sports station. All the time, Brandon, Joey, and Ben. Joey, time to talk some Randy Moss. Really, or Wani, we're talking about. Big impact for the 49ers this season. I'm saying no, I'm saying yes. Uh, let me tell you, first off, why Randy Moss did not have a big impact for the 49ers. He had one workout with the team before the 49ers. That was the New Orleans Saints. If the Saints liked what they saw that much, they would have signed them before so the 49ers. So you're saying Jim Harbaugh after throwing pass and didn't see anything? You guys know what he's talking about all of a sudden? 13 wins last year? Randy Moss, 36 years of age, and at some point, you got to look at father time. Father time catches up to every player in the NFL, wide receivers too. Who else would you wear to have running that nine house? Kyle Williams from last year? Because it didn't work out too well. They were shut down, they covered one side of the field, double team crowd to so you're Welcome back to 95.7 The Game. I am Eric Bryan here with the Guru, and we are discussing today for you, did Joe Lacob deserve to be booed last night? But in 10 minutes, we have Monte Ellis regards to what he thinks of the Warriors and all the booing that went on. But who did he deserve to be booed? Oh, most definitely he deserved to be booed. His heart's in the right place, but he doesn't know, or he should know, Warrior history and all the misery the Warrior fans have gone through. And if you want to give me the logic of let's trade your best player for an injured player who cannot help the team right now, what about all those season ticket holders that are front row paying their hard earned money in this recession? How, how does that go over to them? I, I Why do you give away I understand your what you're saying, but you have to think this isn't a regular owner. This man, Lakeup, has had season tickets for the Warriors for a long time. He's not doing it just to do it. And if you think about the long-term ramifications about having a big man, how do you win championships? It's with a big man. So what the, what the fans need to understand is, although it's not a popular choice now, like I said earlier, Monte, well, Monte Ellis was nothing more than a sixth man who played. You would turn next week. Uh, it's pretty frustrating knowing you got the passion for something and, and the ability to do something, but not able to bring it in and, and, and really harness it. And, uh, I just want to apologize for my, uh, my uh, language earlier. Really. It's all right. I'll pay the fine. In that case, <laughs> don't do it again. But hey, nice job and way to rebound tonight. The champ. Wow, the look on your face says it all right now. You've got to be pretty ticked off. That's a word for it, but the champ accepts whatever's coming down from the top of the champ. All he has to do is prove his worth. And I'm going to keep speaking in the third person, Eric Davis. I'm sorry. That's all I know how to do. Lowell Tucker, I know this is not easy. No, not at all. And the judges were right. I wasn't at my best tonight. And when you have to eliminate five people out of eight, it has to be the best of the best. And I wasn't the best of the best tonight. That's, yeah, it's unfortunate. 
Chris Sue, make a case for yourself right now. If it was this fair, do you agree with the judges? And how do you plan on gathering this vote? Well, I gathered the vote before because I think people knew that I needed another shot. And I think anyone who's listening knew that I knew the topic better than pretty much anyone else debating. And I think the second part of the debate showed that I could be pretty quick on my feet as well. So I think I'm the actual contender in this competition. Um, so I, I'm really hoping to give it another shot and prove to JB that I'm his newest employee. Brandon Santiago, let me throw some gas in the fire here. I didn't think this was fair, man. I thought you were pretty good tonight. You know what? No excuses. I wasn't at my best, like everybody else said. I'm excited, though. I love doing this. I love being in front of the microphone. I feel like I can make a living out of this. So you know what? Thank you guys for this wonderful opportunity. We'll see how it pans out. But I had a great time so far. I mean that. I mean that. All right. Great job. Let's have a round of applause. Sound for sports in the Bay Area. It's 95.7. The Game.